This is Electrical Awareness. My name is Jeroboam Kimtai. Welcome to this wonderful program I have prepared for you. We are talking about transmission lines and how transmission lines work. Before we have transmission lines, energy and electricity has to be generated. Electricity is generated at 25 kV, 25,000 volts. And then it is stepped up to 270 kV or even up to 400 kV. That is 270,000 volts to 400,000 volts. From there it is stepped down a little for secondary transmission down to 66 kV, that is 66,000 volts. And then it is now transmitted to the nearby distribution centers. Distribution centers now is where distribution is done and distribution is done at 11 kV, 11,000 volts. Now from distribution centers, we have trans transformers that are very close to customers, very close to consumers of electricity uh, in domestic level now, where these transformers further step down electricity up to, uh, let's say, between 240 and 415 volts. That is now safe for consumption with everybody. Now today, we are talking about how the transmission lines work. Transmission lines are conductors that help to transport, for lack of a better word, to transport electricity from generation companies to distribution centers. These electrical power lines are very heavy. They are high voltage power lines. Now let us talk about how this high voltage is arrived at. When electricity is transmitted, in transmission we have power. Actually power is what we need to transmit to the other side where consumers are. And power is given by IV, that is current multiplied by voltage. It is the product of current and voltage. So it will be, it will be very expensive to use cables when you are transmitting high current electricity. So instead of high current electricity, we do high voltage electricity. We have resistance in every conductors and this resistance will make electricity to be lost through, uh, through the conductors, through the wires. And therefore, this instead of high current, we do high voltage to reduce loss of electricity. Loss of electricity is because of resistance that is given by V is equals to IR. Now we go back to P is IV. That is power is the product of current and voltage. Now we are interested in power. So let us understand that from this formula power is equal to voltage multiplied by current, we shall still get a product that we need, which is power. By, instead of having high current, we reduce the current and raise the voltage. So if we have reduced the current by, say, 10, we increase the voltage by 10, and we shall get the same product that we wanted in power. And that is what is done on transmission lines. Transmission lines are high voltage. This brings us to another thing. High voltage transmission is quite dangerous because this kind of voltage, one, one, uh, this kind of voltage just wants to move even to the non-conductive non -conductive material like air. When voltage move to air, we have arcing. Arcing is discharge of electricity or a discharge of voltage to the air. That is, that is what we call arcing. And with arcing, fires can be caused. And therefore, we need to avoid this kind of arcing for people not to be burned of fire that is coming from 
high voltage transmission lines and therefore this is what is done for three phase for example there are three wires in transmission lines and these wires are supposed to be spaced in a span of three meters apart every wire from this wire to the second one three meters from the second one to the third one another three meters that will help to reduce on arcing that is what is used to reduce on arcing another thing is these transmission lines are lifted high up by transmission towers we call pylons you will see these things mostly they are metallic transmission towers are metallic and therefore this is supposed to be raised very high to avoid arcing or to avoid arcing arcing that comes from proximity of trees trees when trees grow high and reach close to the transmission lines this is another cause of arcing now you need to understand the following it is very expensive to transmit power using conductors that are insulated and therefore all the transmission lines have conductors that are bare they are not insulated and therefore this means they are exposed and it, this is a major risk to humanity and so what is done in transmission lines these are not connected directly directly to pylons we have insulators that are ceramic in nature and they have discs these discs in, uh, apart from insulating most of the people can use them to guess how much power is passing through a given transmission line get a number of discs count them if for example you get them they are nine you multiply every disc by 15 kV. So if there are nine, for example, you'll get to get a product of around 132 kV. Now, this is not the exact power that is passing through that transmission line, but it is just a guess of how much power is passing through the transmission lines. And therefore, this is very important. In our last in our previous one of the previous episodes we did we talked about power surge and one of the things that causes that cause power surge is uh, the lightning strikes in transmission lines therefore this has been factored in we have conductors on top of 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 wires that have power in it on top on top and these wires do not have electricity they are called shield conductors or earth wires these earth wires are connected on top and so if you have four wires three are the ones that have power in it the fourth one that is normally on top is the one that protects these other conductors from lightning strikes so those kinds of wires are called shield conductors Transmission lines are held by transmission towers, as we have just said, and these transmission towers are pylons. And these pylons, as I repeat, I'm saying again, they are very high. And high there, we have a lot of wind. And so this wind, we don't just call it wind, but we call it wind energy. Wind energy, when they... Uh, they, they, they react with cables to cause oscillations that can destroy conductor material. And therefore, what is done? We have stock bridge dampers that help to reduce this oscillation so that the oscillation cannot damage conductors. So we have stock bridge dampers. Stock bridge dampers are connected from, let's say power is coming from this side, before it is connected to insulators to connect to pylons we have stock bridge dampers and then insulation and then the the tower and then this other side we have insulation and then stock, stock bridge dampers as it continues they are connected one one or even at times two 
one or two two so that is what is done about the stock bridge dampers now another thing to note friends is high voltage transmission lines have electric electromagnetic fields electromagnetic fields move in a given diameter and so if there is another thing close by any kind of a material that can conduct electricity close by electromagnetic fields induce current to such material for example if we have a fence that in normal circumstance is not supposed to have power in it these magnetic electromagnetic fields can induce current on them so we have had cases where people are shocked by material yet they know they don't have power in it so in such cases you have to check whether there is transmission line close there this is what causes uh, the shocking sensation from non-conductive parts and so we need to make sure that when you are getting a house you don't get close so much close to transmission lines we have a distance that people are supposed to stay in another effect of electromagnetic field is reaction by other magnetic appliances that you have in your house yes these electromagnetic fields are that uh, effective and they are effective in a negative way and so we need to make a decision, therefore, whether to stay close to these transmission lines or not. So transmission lines, other people <coughs> may ask, is it necessary for this transmission to be there? Yes, they are only mandatory because power is generated from very far away, very far away from consumers. And so consumers need power, and since it is very far, power cannot be transmitted with low volt. Low voltage cannot bring you power. So we need high voltage transmission lines. And so these are there to stay with us as long as we are still using power that is transmitted from far. However, we have had cases where power is generated from close by, especially with the coming of solar, solar system, solar panels. This has helped because of course uh, solar panels have reduced quite a lot the cost is quite low and so a lot of people are employing that in countries like the u.s in fact people have their own solar panels that generate electricity and then in their meters we have their meters are calibrated in a way that power from the national grid or from the utility grid as they call over there when you have generated power more power than you can use this same power can be sold to the grid and so solar power has come in to help in contributing power to the utility grid depending on which state they are in so uh, most of the states in America have employed this arrangement in that you can generate power and if your use is less than what you have generated, you are able to sell power to the utility grid. Maybe to recap, I am talking about transmission lines and I have talked about high pylons. They have been raised high above. We have insulators. We have stock bridge dampers. We have remedies on how we can reduce oscillations by the stock, stock, stock bridge dampers. And now that electricity transmission lines also, we have, we, have, we have electromagnetic fields that come from transmission lines. What are we supposed to do? I'm bringing this story because, especially in our nation here recently, uh, we have had the authorities give deadlines for the people who are close by transmission lines to move away. So this program, I'm doing it for you, for you to understand what electricity is all about when it is being transmitted in high voltage, for you to make informed decisions about 
either moving away or if you are away already. Please remember to subscribe, to share, and forward this, uh, this channel to other people, like, and at least watch 100% view. That is what I request from you. And therefore, as we recap, can you make sure you know the following? You have to be 15 away, 15 meters away from the transmission lines. It is between 15 meters to 30 meters away from the transmission lines. And then your house, if you are at all, you are close to transmission lines, then you avoid uh, staying in houses that are higher, closer to transmission lines. That is what I can submit to you. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. May God bless you and may God keep you even as we prepare for the next episode. So let's meet on the other side in the next episode. Thank you so much.